Hello, I'm Dean Bertram, and welcome to My Weird Library. Today we're going to be looking at this wonderful old anthology from 1944, Great Tales of Terror and the Supernatural. I don't know if you can see it, but just I don't have a dust jacket for it, but the boards alone are gorgeous. Can you see the little anthropomorphic house there and the weird little tree which looks like a human hand and the old like the night clouds blowing in? It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful book. It's been batted around, I'm sure, by previous owners and myself. It came out in, in 1944. It was a, a World War II book. I think they called them war books. They had to be careful with paper and the like. And it was it was a collection of the people who were considered the greatest, I suppose, masters of literary horror at the time. So it's obviously got Edgar Allan Poe in there and Ambrose Bierce and, you know, a whole string of authors to H.P. Lovecraft, one of my favorite authors, who himself was very influenced by the author we're looking at today, and that's Arthur Macken and his classic tale, The Great God Pan. Now, Macken was inspired to write that book when he was a young man. He grew up in Wales and he spent time amongst old pre-Roman ruins, ruins dating back to pagan worship of the old god Noden, who I believe was meant to be a fertility god. And supposedly he had this very strange feeling when he was at that site and it inspired the book. I'm not going to talk too much about the novella, The Great God Pan. It started, though, as originally, I think he just wrote a chapter and was published in 1890 as a standalone. And then he he extended into a novella, which was published in 1894. It wasn't particularly it wasn't particularly successful when it was published. But the book itself, and again, I'm not going to spoil too much of it because I like anybody listening to this show to go and read the things ideally I recommend if you haven't read it. But it starts with a doctor who conducts a type of surgical experiment on a young woman and his idea is he can do surgically by doing a small incision in the brain what hermeticists and what mystics have tried to do probably from the time of neoplatonism and gnosticism onwards and that's see beyond the veil of this reality which the book says is all glamour and you know fabrication and artifice that there's a a deeper reality behind it. And anyway, the surgical procedure, not surprising, given that it's a horror story, is in a way successful, but <laughs> ends in tears and the ramifications travel through the rest of that book. Now, as I mentioned, Lovecraft was inspired by Mackin, but he also had an influence, perhaps on esotericism in some ways, as Lovecraft himself did. And I'll link the episode where we talk about Lovecraft's influence at the end of at the end of this video. But Mackin supposedly was very well received by occultists and mystics of the day. He himself became a member of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, which was perhaps the most influential occult organization in London at the time. And it's mentioned in Morning of the Mag Magicians by Bergier and Powell that that A. E. Wait, the great occultist and creator of the or co-creator of the Rider Waite tarot deck, actually wrote to Macken and told him that somehow he'd, you know, been able to pierce the veil through his imagination rather than through any type of actual practical magical workings that he'd gotten there with the great god Pan and with some of his other writings. So it's interesting to see a, a key literary figure, also a key occult figure of that period in the late 19th into the early 20th centuries in the UK. Now, of course, he wasn't alone. Yeats, the famous Irish poet and compiler of fairy tales from the period, was also an influential member and for a time, I believe, was the head of the Golden Dawn. So there's this wonderful cross-pollination between literary traditions of the time, this type of tradition that was more interested in finding some type of pure truth in beauty rather than, or in art, rather than in something that was ethical, which was very much Victorian art was meant to contain ethical messages. But there was this kind of reaction by this this movement called aestheticism, which was just interested in finding beauty and truth in itself. And both Mackin and Yeats are a part of that tradition. Anyway, The Great God Pan is a fascinating book. I really suggest that people with any type of interest in the occult or within weird fiction should read it. 
Pan kind of stands in that book without giving too much away as a kind of allegory, as much as anything else, for this force that lets us see into the other world, that there is this older tradition. And this has come across using Pan as this kind of emblem, has come across in other occultism, like The Rebirth of Pan, the book by James Brandon, which is a fairly, it's kind of a cult classic. I think it's out of print now. It's pretty hard to find. But he suggests Pan is an energy force as well behind everything from UFOs to Bigfoot sightings and influence ancient mound building and the like. Also in the show Hellia, and this is a little kind of funny personal aside the the show Hellier if you haven't seen it's fantastic went for two seasons and was done by the Newkirks Greg Newkirk and Dana Newkirk and Connor Randall and Carl Pfeiffer was the director and the director of photography anyway that show starts essentially with an investigation about or an investigation of somebody who's had a Hopkinsville type goblin sighting the famous ufo goblin sighting in recent times and they start to investigate and it spirals into this string of conspiracies but in that series they actually do a ritual to pan and it plays out in real time and i remember when i was watching that episode where they do the ritual to pan in the cave feeling kind of uncomfortable like it felt it, it felt quite powerful and i thought this is playing out in real time this is like a ritual to pan is taking place in my living room so i broke it up i turned it off and then watched the rest of it later so to not to let the whole ritual play out anyway at a film festival that uh, i run in eau claire wisconsin midwest weird fest with my partner jen Durrell. we had greg newkirk and we had uh carl pfeiffer too the third annual festival, which is a few years ago now, and we screened that same episode, that episode with the ritual to pan at the end of it. And this was around the time that COVID actually was emerging. It hadn't really been, it was becoming a thing just as that festival ran, but it was before there were any lockdowns or anything, but it was just emerging then. And certainly it had already screened and very quite successfully. It's probably, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, maybe millions had watched it by now. And I remember when after the the festival, as, as COVID became more of a thing, the pandemic became more of a thing. I remember jokingly saying, and a Facebook message or a Facebook comment on a post to Greg Newkirk. What have you guys done? You know, like pan, panic, pandemic. What did that ritual actually open up? Because I believe all those words are, are, are related to the original word pan. Anyway, who knows? Maybe we we should be conscious that this force that various people have labeled as pan throughout the ages and throughout even modern up to the current day esotericists we should perhaps be careful anyway thank you so much for watching and watching the show and listening i can finally announce that as i've been hinting for the past couple of weeks that my weird library will be no more in a couple of weeks but out of its ashes will grow mysterious library which will be on the untold radio network which I'm so excited to be a part of. Talking Weird will also be moving there. My co-host Jen Durrell on Talking Weird will be coming with me, of course, with, talk, with Talking Weird. And the rebirth of My Weird Library into Mysterious Library, will ha I'll have another host with me doing that, and that is Jason McLean, who's a fantastic writer in his own right. We'll be talking about weird books just like I have been here, but it will be for an hour plus segment and it will be fun to bounce ideas off somebody other than just talking to the camera as much as I love talking to you guys. So I'll be back probably for one or two more of these. And until I chat to you again, keep it weird. <laughs>